So what year did I meet William? Let me think. I, I think it was, like he said, late 1984 when he was a student at the community college and I was still in high school. And I have to say, yeah, I call him William because um, I do think he's kind of outgrown Bunny, although I did know him as Bunny. I never knew Willie Wise. I never knew him as Willie. When he left my life, he was still Bunny, even though I called him William or sometimes bunny so even now i'm still not comfortable with the whole willy wise thing um even though i know that's how the public knows him so i call him um william as i've always done or um at home he's still bunny we when we met i was a student in high school and he is right about the fact that he was leaving my mom's office one day and i my mom was a teacher at the local college where he attended and he was walking out of her office, and I did. All of that part is true. I was like, oh, Mom, who is that guy? He was gorgeous. <laughs> I tell people that from the time I was a teenager, he pretty much set the standard for what gorgeous was for me for many years to come. And, um, yeah, he was he a was good-looking guy. Now, I'm not sure about this story that he tells that I never left for nine months after after he, after I first met him. Like, you know, she was there every day for nine months. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I plead the fifth on that part. I will say that I was there as often as I could be. And he was a lot of fun to look at. How did I know I still loved him? Well, I always knew that I could love him because he, anyone who knows him knows he's probably one of the sweetest, kindest people in the world. And I realized that he developed some rougher edges after we split up <laughs> a few years ago, you know, because it has been, you know, a little time since we split up. But he's still the same sweet, kind, and gentleman. And in fact, I think since we've been reconciled and, and since we've come back together again, I've actually seen a lot of those softer edges come back. So I really didn't have a lot of experiences with the, you know, kind of rough and tumble willy personality. Um, I have only had for the past few years my original gentleman, kind, gentle William, you know. So it was not hard to love him again. We both always say it was kind of like we just parted for the weekend. Like, you know, we used to, we had a different way of getting along when we were young. I'll get on his nerves and disappear for a couple of days and not talk to him. That was his my way of letting him know that I was upset with him. He would do the same, kind of just stop talking to me for a couple of days and then after a few days the phone would ring on one end or the other and we would miss each other and it would just be like, okay, well, we're ready to see each other again. Are you ready to see me? I'm ready to see you. And we wouldn't even really think about whatever it was that made me upset or made him upset. Usually it was about third parties. <laughs> We were young and, you know, that happens. But um, once he came back this time, and we know, both know that, you know, that part of our lives is over. There are no more third parties in either of our lives. Um, we both pretty much knew that, you know, life would be happy. That, you know, it's kind of like we just split up for a little while and didn't see each other for a few days and then we were back. And that's basically all it feels like. I, I feel like no time has passed. Um, he's still beautiful, you know, a little less hair, but he's still gorgeous and still funny and still strong. 
I think the most important thing about William was that he always made me feel safe. I had had some difficult times growing up and had been through some difficult things. And um, the one thing that I always knew when he was around is that I was safe because he was going to protect me. And he proved that on more than one occasion over a course of many years, that he would always make sure that I was safe. And um, I think him being back is kind of like being home. It's like to ultimately feel so safe that you know that the one person in this world that would always protect you no matter what is back in your life is a sense of peace that I've never felt. Why are we doing Wiser Now? A lot of people ask us that. I think that, um, for one, I think it's therapeutic for us to be able to kind of share a love that is kind of lasted through time. I mean, these are two people who kind of never left each other's minds, and, and I don't mind saying that, you know. He was one of those people that never left my heart, never left my mind. I can think of all the times where I would be when I would think about him, where I would, what would be happening when I would think about him, um, what kinds of things would be going on in my life when I would think about him. And so, um, even though we were separated by time and space, we weren't separated in our hearts. And he shares the same thing. That, you know, where is she and what is she doing and how is she? Those are the things that, you know, let you know that someone is meant to be in your heart. And I just believe God worked that out in his own way, in his own time. It's timelessness. Because love is timeless. It's timeless. I think another reason for wanting to do this show is just because I want to see something different on television and I know other people do too. Where are the stories of authentic love and authentic life and people who are genuinely building something, building businesses, building careers, building families? who are trying to do something and facing some of the same struggles that you face every day, you know, trying to build a life, but doing so in love and peace and, you know, not to say that there aren't dramatic things that happen in life, but there's a way to respond to everything that doesn't involve stomping and spitting and cursing and throwing things and women, you know, with the fingers and the necks beating each other. I just think that there is a different way, a better way to share a story than that our children can watch, that our grandchildren can watch, and that we don't one day have to be ashamed of. You know, we are not a monolith as African American people, as Americans, as people, but that we are a diverse people who don't all curse and throw things and behave badly and, you know, just behave in shameful ways on television. That has to stop.